It dates back to 1800s. The federal government forced the Sioux Indians to sign the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868. And through that, they took about three-fourths of all the Sioux Indian land and left the, the Sioux around one-fourth. The one-fourth that they kept included the Black Hills. Well, they thought that uh, the government, that there was just a bunch of mountains up there that didn't have any more real value. That was 1868 they signed the treaty. About six years later, they uh, heard there was gold there. So they announced uh, to the world there was gold there, and all these white miners started pouring in. And the Sioux tried to repulse them, kick them out. And then they brought in a United States 7th Cavalry to protect the white miners as they illegally mined gold in the Black Hills. They ordered all the Sioux out of that area, and then they were moving it uh, further out on the plains. And uh, they brought in uh, three cavalry units, Custer, 7th Cavalry, and two others. And whoever found them first, they were supposed to move them out. If they refused, they had orders to shoot any and then over 12 who resisted. Custer found them first. Instead of notifying the other two regiments, he divided his group into three and attacked, and they got wiped out. It's called Custer's Last Stand. My great-grandfather was killed in that, and there's a marker on the battlefield where he fell. He was one of the leaders. But the discovery of uh, gold, which we're going to talk about, was uh, that uh, brought about in Custer's last stand in 1876. Then in 1890, they found some Sioux who were worshipping a new form of religion called the Ghost Dance. And they uh, were worried they might go on a warpath, so they brought in the remnants of the 7th Cavalry. And they divided uh, men and, uh, on one side, women and children on the other, and searching for weapons. And in the search for weapons, they found one Indian who had a rifle hidden on him. They tried to take it, and they went off. They then shot indiscriminately into the Indians. They killed 250 Sioux. Most of them were women and children. And they justified this by saying they violated the religious code, that Indians were not supposed to worship their own religion. The Black Hills, after they wiped out George Custer and uh, another group, they took the Black Hills. William Randolph Hearst somehow found out that there was gold there. He claims he bought the mine from three white miners. Now, how would three white miners get a deed to the Black Hills in South Dakota from Sioux Indians who didn't speak English? And they haven't given them one red cent to Sioux Indians. They took that illegally from Sioux Indians. Well, the government wanted to give them something like, I was about $10 million or something. The Sioux refused it. They said, no, no, we're not going to sell it. So William Randolph Hearst has been illegally mining gold there since uh, 1880. They're and, still doing that right And now. still mining. It's the largest gold mine in the Western Hemisphere. They take it out billions of dollars in gold. And you think that he, with all the billions of dollars he's taken out, that he would give some back to the Sioux, who he stole the, uh, the coal from. But he hasn't uh, done one single thing on this. You'd think that they would set up a scholarship program. They lead in the state and, and people who can't read or write. And they're the poorest people in the state. You know, when my father, and of course our group, led the takeover and occupation, reclaiming of the Black Hills back in August 29th, 1970, that was the first Sioux Indian uprising since we wiped out General Custer. And it was done peacefully. It wasn't done using guns. It wasn't done in this full-on military way of trying to reclaim sacred site. We did it in a very, very peaceful and very spiritual way. They renamed Mount Rushmore Crazy Horse Mountain. That name itself means a lot to Sioux Indians, uh, whether you're Lakota, Dakota, Nakota. That name, Crazy Horse, means so much, and there's so much power there. And the reason why we decided to do this is we do want to seek some reparations and to hold George Hurst and his family held, held accountable for breaking these treaties. These treaties are the, supposed to be the highest form of law on the land and for them to legally steal our sacred site and put these four ugly faces on top of our mountain and then of course them extracting all of our gold and the way that they have illegally extracted our gold it's just completely unjust and you know at this point you know people don't understand the ramifications um, of how they extracted the gold uh, as far as the mercury that was used to extract the gold. It's never going to break down. People don't understand. That doesn't just affect Sioux Indians. That affects everybody who lives around in that area, you know, whenever they ingest any of the water or any of the food supply that's grown out there, you're basically ingesting that mercury. 
Well, we're going to be at the Hearst Castle, which is, of course, located at, uh, at 7, 750 Hearst Castle Road in San Simas, California. We're asking people to meet us in the front entrance. And, of course, this is an educational picket. This is an educational protest. We want these people to be held accountable for what they've done. Now, in 1980, the federal government offered us X amount of dollars to suffice for five states. But you can't put a price tag on land. And you can't put a price tag on gold. You can, but you can't because, you know, the reality is every day it goes up. The value of gold goes up, it goes down. But we need to have some reparations from this. And, of course, the Hearst family, since they're the ones who have conspired with the federal government, the Department of Interior, and the Bureau of Indian Affairs to steal our gold, they need to be held accountable for their actions. Well, this was chosen because think about a castle, you know, and what that's supposed to mean, especially just the oppression that castle signifies and just the elitism this family obviously has being part of the Illuminati. You're never going to hear anybody trying to hold them accountable for some of the things that they've done, illegal things. I mean, they're basically common crooks. For Sioux Indians, the indigenous people whose land that is, for them to steal our gold and never give us anything, for over 125 years they illegally mined there. I mean, what we're trying to seek is, of course, for them to improve our housing on reservations throughout Sioux Territory. I mean, just the housing out there alone screams for help. There's a number of things that they could do to invest to improve Indian life on the reservations from where they stole it. Well, we want people to really realize that Indian people are still not only here, but we're still seeking justice. We still are trying to seek that justice that any any common person, if if, if something was stolen from you, whether it be something very sacred, no matter what form of religion you pray to, you have something that is very sacred within yourself that you value, that is just, there's no value that you can put on it. Well, you know, a sacred site that is the equivalent of Mecca for the Lakota Nation, we need some justice on this, and that's what we're really seeking. The UN isn't really doing anything for us. You know, they release these nice little feel-good documents, but they're, they're not enforcing our treaties. So where do we go to have this enforcement? Where do we go as indigenous people? Who do we go to to demand our reparations? Because obviously the federal government does not want to give us reparations. And of course the UN isn't doing anything for us. Be, uh, before we get too sidetracked, I did want to let people know how to get more information on this event. Oh, sure. We're actually on Facebook. Most of the people and, of course, the younger generation out there, we have a Facebook event on this. And, of course, it's titled Demanding Reparations and Accountability for the Illegal Theft of the Black Hills and the Homestead Gold Mine. This is set up as an event on Facebook. You can type in United Native Americans, INC. And, of course, Professor Lehman L. Brightman, founder and national president of United Native Americans. It's very important that we continue this work that was started back in the late 60s and 70s. It's very important that people understand that the struggle still continues and we're not going to stop until we get some reparations.